Good morning, people. Thank you very much for your time. I know it's valuable. I'll try not to waste it. If you saw the last video about getting the power out of the 23 to 25 300SX XC version, not the headlight version. If you saw that with all that power and you want to see the simpleness of the build and how you get that much power without it not costing much money, well then here we go. It might be a little longer than you want, but we'll cover everything as well as I can. Okay, basically with this, there's two sides to it. There's a mechanical side, things we do just to avoid problems that are known to exist here. And then there's the performance side, things that just increase performance. The cool thing is uh, our number one selling product, which is this crankcase pressure sensor holder, this billet one, which goes right here and replaces this stock flimsy goofy one. That increases performance and solves problems because the stock one is known to leak. It has a tendency to leak between the pressure sensor itself and this rubber tube. So you have this small ceiling area with a little o-ring in it that goes into this rubber tube. They flex, they leak. You get wrong pressure signals to the engine. The bike runs rich, it runs lean. It's not sure what's going on. It's also sucking air, so it's losing vacuum and pressure right there makes it run worse. Also, the angle of it isn't too grand. So if it, the bike's going up like this, things are running back into this sensor, this small membrane that's in this hole, it can get clogged up with fuel and oil, not work as well, not send near as good of a signal. The bike could run blubbery and awkward, uh, you know, and just cause various issues. The new one we've got, obviously that takes the sensor and puts it straight up and down. So even if you're going up like this, it'll come back into this chamber, but it doesn't fill the membrane and it's stout and it's a good seal because this is going to metal. So that for the 2995, that's the most intelligent thing you can do, which is probably why it's the number one selling product. It solves a mechanical issue and it's a performance based thing. So that's number one. Let's just clear out the mechanical things now. Number two, cut piston. You know, I've talked about this a few times before. I've heard all the comments in the, in the emails and calls. I'm gonna narrow it down so you don't misunderstand, hopefully. This only applies to 300s, not 250s and other bikes. I don't care about 250s and other bikes. I care about 300s here. Also, it's a high RPM thing. What we're talking about is the clearance between these two tangs and the top of the crankshaft, uh, the top of the crankshaft lobes. Um, so look at this picture. You can see how this one is cut up higher than this. This is stock. This is how I cut them two millimeters off this tang and this tang. And that's how I sell them to get you the clearance needed. Just take a look at the pick. Now you've seen the difference of the two. Now take a look at this pick. When this is at bottom dead center, you can see the relationship between this and the top of the crankshaft. The place that it could make contact is where this black arrow is pointing right here. And the only time it would make contact is when you're really revving the thing out. So if you're riding the thing in moto or desert, wrapping it out, that's when you have a chance to hit. You don't want that little of a clearance in there. If they do touch, it's a yard sale. So it's up to you. If you take the bike and you're just playing in the outdoors and you rarely get above three quarters throttle and you're just having a good time, I don't think it's a concern. But if you're fast or you're doing that kind of stuff and you want to cover your butt, it's like a light duty tube. It's a mechanical thing. When it goes, it's not good. So that's up to you whether you want to do it or not. You can get a new piston from us. You can take yours out, cut it. You could use a file. You're just making clearance there, folks, and then put it back together. Okay, that's out of the way. Drilling a one quarter hole in the left side of the water passage. There's another video out there I did where this one, this water passage on the left hand side doesn't have the flow that it needs to stabilize the water coming through the top of the cylinder into the head. This always led to a hot spot 
on the left hand side of the exhaust port where the cylinder is always hottest on the exhaust port side but you always had a hot spot here and it was noticeable because of a discoloration. It's very easy to fix. You just take a one quarter inch drill bit and you drill it through this hole. Now, I have to say it because people don't pay attention to stuff. Should I drill both? Did I tell you to drill both? I said, just drill this side. That stabilizes out the water with this smaller hole. Things are good. If you drill this side, you're back to it being an uneven balance and it could be, you know, muckied up. Here's a pick of it. It's very easy. Put it in your drill and just plunk it through this hole. Okay, that's out of the way. I have to say at this point, I would just go ahead and use the thermostat tube. Uh, it's not that hot. There was a time when we were taking the thermostat out of the tube using the tube from the motocross bike, uh, the coolant tube, so there's no thermostat in it to cool things down. The whole purpose of that was to calm down this hot spot, but the bikes ran cold, especially in the winter time, and there was a chance of it failing a plug until it really got to temp. Now that this is figured out, this solves the problem. You can leave that thermostat in there. Things will run better. And then just a simple leak down test. There was another one on this. These things like to lose pressure. You will never get the power and performance out of it that you want if it's losing pressure. And there's lots of places they can lose it. Base gasket, this pressure temp sensor, this right here, this O-ring that's inside this cover where your exhaust valve control goes on. I would take all this stuff off, just use a clear RTV silicone, goop all this different stuff up, cover your butt, make sure it's good. Okay, mechanically, we're good. Um, as far as testing procedures go, it's always 91 octane, 92 octane gas from the shell station with ethanol. Like ethanol, it's good for octane. I don't use that non-ethanol stuff you get from the farm store because it's inconsistent. You're not sure what you're getting. Also, there's most of it's riding testing. Obviously, there's dyno backup on the stuff. And the third thing we do is I use this um, detonation meter that was gifted to me from Honda Factory Road Racing in Japan in 2002. It's very simple. It's a very intelligent little thing. It's got a sound module on here. It uh, goes to a, a stud. Just you pick your stud anywhere right there by the cylinder. It picks up sound. Anytime there's a ding from detonation, this light that's right here goes off and flashes. You just put it up in front of the handlebars, kind of in front of your face, and you can see it. So you can see detonation on the dyno. Sometimes you can see it when they're out there riding, really pushing it and figuring things out. Okay, performance. We got through the CCP holder, reed strips. You know what, for 20 bucks, it doesn't do anything for top end, but for bottom end and mid range, it's the single best thing you can do. And basically they're just two little fiberglass strips that go here that hold your reed pedal down. Stock, you have this thing, you have a reed stop, which you would see here when you take your bike apart. This is a hard thing. It doesn't let the reed open as easy. It's not responsive to the lower vacuums and pulses down there at the lower end. Then these flexible strips are allowing the reeds to be. They always work. Does it do anything for top end? No. Bottom to mid? Who doesn't want bottom to mid? Free bottom to mid for $19.95. That's the deal. ECU, now we're into the ECU stuff. We've got everything out of the way. We're mechanically sound. Things are good. The simple things are fixed. ECU, that's your big deal. It's exhaust valve control is a lot of it. Opening the exhaust valve at a different time and quicker. Things you, you, the only way to do it is in the ECU. That's really been narrowed down. Ignition timing. We've figured that out. They're crisp and clean, they rip. And then you don't have to add much more fuel, but there's a bit more fuel added in the places it needs to be. So you are safe and it hauls butt. Spark plug. Uh, I just changed it because the stock one sucks. BR7ES, it's just a cheap little crap plug with a big fat electrode on it. At least you could go to an Iridium plug, a smaller electrode. Now, if I'm on it, you know, if it's warmer out, lower elevations, going faster, I use an eight. This is a BR8 IEX. You can get them off the Amazon all day long. You can see how my plug's running. Take a look at my plug real close up. You can see how well this thing is burning on my eight. So that's pretty good. Now I also use these plugs. It's a 7V power plug. It's basically a seven and a half 
on the heat range, a little bit colder than a seven. The V powers work really well in these bikes. Uh, we use those at Factory Kawasaki and these things are pretty stinking cheap compared to the Iridium stuff. Again, this one didn't detonate. I didn't have a detonation problem on this thing, but if I was fast on the motocross track or in the desert, it's warmer out, I would always go for the colder plug. And if you don't lose bottom end on the colder plug, always run the colder plug, cover your butt. So there's not any kind of detonation problems on the top end. If you're lower in the RPM range, you can easily use the seven. You can see my seven here. It's got a decent amount of time on it. It's still a real nice burn. It looks good. There's no speckles of aluminum on it, which would be a, you would see if there was any kind of detonation going on. The porcelain is the hottest part of the plug. Pieces of aluminum off the top of your piston will come off and they will stick because it's, it's very hot, little pieces of molten metal, and they will stick to the top of the porcelain. If you look at it, you can look at it through the camera on your phone or magnifying glass. If you see little speckles of silver, that's the start of detonation. That's a telltale sign. We don't have any of that. Uh, oversized exhaust valve cover. It's just this. It has, does nothing for top. This is just a bottom ed to mid range thing. It's a bigger area cover than the stock one. I've got a stock one here. So the volume inside of this is smaller than this. For the small price of 50 bucks, just do it. Who doesn't want bottom to mid? Battery, you know what the thing is? The better battery that we sell, I'll show it to you here one more time. That thing helps bottom to mid, even on these bikes, it really helps it on the XCW bike where they lack a capacitor uh, in the electrical system on these bikes. I didn't know on these things, you, you don't see any gain on the dyno. It's, it doesn't help mid to top, but it definitely stabilizes things, keeps you from having problems. But even on these bikes down low, for the Christmas side of things, it does help. And I didn't have a cheap crap stock battery to go back and forth with the other day, but somebody brought one over and just playing up and down the street where there's no tire spin with the dyno tire on the road, it was very apparent to he and I that yes, it is, starts easier, seems crisper, um, you know, higher gear, it definitely zinged things up. So for that aspect of it, for a hundred bucks to cover your butt where it always starts, starts in the cold, makes the bike run better, it won't leave you stranded. Yeah, the battery is now on the list. And then the combustion chamber, 200 PSI is about the limit on these things. You get higher than that, you're gonna start to lose, you, don't gain anything on the bottom. Maybe you feel a little bit on the down there on the, the very bottom, and that's cool, but you can get too much compression there, coupled with the extra ignition timing, different things that you do. It's fine if you stay down there, I guess, but if you ever get to a part to where you're on it, you know, having some fun, trying to hold it wide open or what, anything like that, it's gonna be bad. And you saw in the other video how bad that held you back. So that's simple. Uh, here's the one that's actually out of that bike that we ran. Yeah, nice little burn pattern. You always want this little um, round area here between the squish band and the dome so things can easily flow. That helps it rev higher. If you have a sharp turn there, it will make it a little bit crisper on the bottom, but that doesn't help top end or the over, over rev. And that's also a hot spot to create detonation. Sharp edges create detonation because anything that's sharp gets hot faster. When it's round, it's better off. Right. From sea level up until 5,000 feet, I would run this with the base gasket that ends in 8.0, which is 32, 33 thousandths thick. When I say that base gasket, that's the one that you get off the KTM parts fish, where you'll see them all, all the base gaskets, and the biggest one that ends in 8.0, that's the one you want. And then if you're running you know, 5,000 feet to 8,000 feet, use the stock chamber because that'll pull it in right there about that, uh, that 200 PSI, you know, maybe 185 to 200, because for every, every foot of elevation you go up, you're gonna lose 3% of compression. Now you've taken your 230 and you've rolled it right back, you do the math, and you're right there about that 200 PSI. So you can see how that works out well. You don't need to buy that high compression crap. Fuel rail, it doesn't do anything for performance. It makes sure that performance isn't stifled. It's this billet one we make, these holes in the bottom of it are bigger to feed the in injectors and make sure if you're running wide open for a period of time, that's not a starvation point for the fuel. 
and you don't need to ch change jetting or anything for it. Also when the injectors fit in there, there's no place for clips to go into. I don't know why people are worried about clips. Where, where are they gonna go? The injectors, they're not going anywhere. They just hang out here. So not a concern. The reason that this was made is because the stock ones right here at the neck, they were plastic and they were snapping all the time. You couldn't even buy them for a while. So we made the billet one to avoid a problem point. In a yeah, if you add all that up, man, you're only at 580 bucks. And then the piston, if you want to get the piston from us, that's 200, but you could cut your own. So yeah, and you don't even necessarily need all this stuff. If let's say you're at 5,000 feet, you wouldn't even need the combustion chamber. Maybe you already have a good battery. You can see it doesn't take much. Just money in the right place.